Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more of our book, Poison Power. This is my bookmark. i put my thing in there. And uh, it was written by Dr. John Goffman, Dr. Arthur Tamplin. You can see the subtitle, The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants, which we lost that argument. But... Uh, before I start to read, I want to tell people that the reason I'm reading this book is not because I want to read this book. It's because I recently became aware when Fukushima happened, a year after it actually happened, that the nuclear industry has been lying to us completely, misleading us about the negative effects of radiation by 90%. Um, it is a scientific fact. If we look at where all the nuclear activities are, the cancer rates, childhood uh, birth defects, off the charts. And it is our tax dollars that funds this. So as Americans, we have a responsibility to respond to that um, unjustness within our system. And what we are calling out specifically is the Price-Anderson Act. And we are about to get into that into this next section. But part of what the Price-Anderson Act does is indemnifies means nobody's responsible for any harm caused by a corporation or an individual beyond a certain amount financially, which is very small. And they're just like, nobody's responsible. It's unconscionable, actually. They are making decisions, com clear disregard for public health. Um, based on profits, purely profits. So, Poison Power, Dr. John Goffman, Dr. Arthur Tamplin, Chapter 7, Nuclear Electricity and the Citizens' Rights. We are on the subtitle called, I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see better. The Constitutionally Questionable Price-Anderson Act. In the earliest days of the peaceful atom, there were wildly optimistic projections that electric power would become so inexpensive through nuclear electricity generation that metering the electricity would be hardly worthwhile. Those economic forecasts have proved to be sadly incorrect. In spite of massive subsidies by the federal government, direct and indirect, Nuclear electricity is hardly holding its own against fossil fuel electric electricity generation. And it must be pointed out, the latter receives no federal assistance. The Atomic Energy Establishment, embarrassed by its great promises and expenditures, wanted to make some public showing with nuclear electricity generation was moving ahead as advertised. But the leaders of the electric utility industries were disinclined to invest in nuclear power, lacking insurance coverage against possibly catastrophic nuclear accidents. The private insurance industry, feeling that the risk of accidents was unknown, would no more insure the industry against major nuclear accidents than it would the public. Wow. The AEC sponsored one well-known study of the potential cost of a serious accident in nuclear electricity generation. The results published in Report WASH WASH 70, known as the Brookhaven Report, which considered reactors only one-fifth the size of those currently being developed and planned, still concluded that a serious accident could produce monetary losses of up to $7 billion over and above the injuries and losses of life. And you notice they don't tell us about the losses of life. It is never actually really considered. Again, another inhumanity. Back to the book. There is no evidence that new reactor developments have lessened the potential money losses to be faced with a major accident. Engineering developments may have cut the risk of certain accidents, but the larger capacity of the newer plants may have offset this. 
Indeed, no estimate has been made that excludes an even larger possible loss from the new, highly experimental nuclear electricity reactors. Do you guys feel like guinea pigs? I do. Back to the book. So the private insurance company refused full coverage for nuclear electricity plants, and the electric utility industry would not risk construction or operation of nuclear electricity genera generating stations without insurance coverage. In the impasse had arrived in the development of the, quote, peaceful atom, unquote. Sensing that their major promotion was in jeopardy, the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy came forth with a fantastically bold solution. This is where we get fucked. Excuse my language, people. This is where they, like, threw us under the bus. A bill was proposed known as the Price-Anderson Act, which simply eliminated individual liability in the event of a major accident in a nuclear electricity plant. Get that? Simply eliminated individual liability in the event of a major accident in a nuclear electricity plant. Meaning someone can intentionally tell someone to release radioactivity or do something incorrectly and never be held accountable if they know it was incorrect. Originally, this act, set, this act set $500 million as the maximum liability for a single, single nuclear plant disaster and more recently extended to $560 million. And in addition, all but $60 million of the insurance up to this limit was to be, be provided by the U.S. taxpayer. So the insurance company only pays $60 million. We have to pay the $500 million. And it's, I guarantee you it's way worse now. I don't even know, but I would guarantee you. So if we consider the $7 billion potential loss projected by the Brookhaven report, we note that private insurance carriers, in spite of governmental excuse me, in spite of governmental prodding, refused to cover more than 1% of the potential loss. This probably makes nuclear electricity generation one of the least attractive insurance risks known. The key point, over and above the lack of confidence of the insurance industry in nuclear electricity plants, is the utter disregard of personal rights to the price the Price-Anderson Act represents for the average citizen. I am going to read that again. The key point, over and above the lack of confidence of the insurance industry in nuclear electricity plants, is the utter disregard of personal rights the Price-Anderson Act represents for the average citizen. Since the maximum coverage is $560 million per nuclear electricity accident, and since the damage can run into $7 billion in a serious accident, the individual might only recover seven cents out of every dollar lost, assuming he is lucky enough to emerge from such an accident with his life. The insurance industry will not suffer. The electric utility industry will not suffer. Through the generous manipulations of the U.S. Congress, prodded by the Joint Committee, only the citizen will suffer in the name of progress. If the Price-Anderson Act were repealed, as assuredly it should be, it is extremely doubtful that any future nuclear electricity generating plants would be built above ground. Indeed, it is extremely doubtful that any electric utility company would be so foolhardy as to continue operation of nuclear electricity plants already built. 
electric utility propagandists, and atomic energy entrepreneurs state that the extreme skepticism of the insurance industry shouldn't put anyone off. The, ins the insurance industry, they tell us, refuses to underwrite the risk simply because there is no prior, quote, experience, unquote, upon which to base an estimate of the risk of major nuclear power plant accidents. Precisely. But there is much more to it than this simple truth. The industry is saying in the most persuasive manner that they, the insurance industry, have no confidence whatsoever in the hopeful, optimistic safety calculations of nuclear electricity propagandists. Certainly not enough confidence to risk dollars. Another area of disenfranchisement of citizens by the nuclear industry must be clearly understood. The Atomic Energy Commission and the electric utility industry are well aware of the public's great skepticism concerning the safety of nuclear electric plants. So they resort to a form of public relations that might easily be construed as bribery. For a variety of obvious economic reasons, power companies prefer to install their nuclear electricity generating plants as close as possible to the heart of the major metropolitan centers. Such installations mean minimum transmission costs and losses in delivering power from production, from production site to site of utilization. If they could get away with it, the utilities would place these plants directly in the major metropolitan centers. Indeed, if the nuclear power plants, if the nuclear plants were as safe as the propagandists claim, there would be no reason not to do so. Realizing they are ill prepared to answer questions that may be raised in such a large community, the utility companies shrewdly avoid these locations. There is little that can that can make installation of a nuclear electric power plant look attractive in a major city. It's 12 minutes, you guys. I think I'm going to end. I'm on page 181, and uh, how far do we have to go? Yeah, on this subchapter, it's quite a few pages. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you for listening to this. The reason I'm doing this is to help people get informed. If you get bored by my reading, please get the book because we need to be informed. We have been grossly misinformed by the nuclear industry. And I don't know about you, but I've had my Scooby-Doo moment already. Like, I'm like, Arr? like, seriously, this is like, it's beyond betrayal. It's treason, really, honestly. And while they have all the power, we have the brains, we have the heart, we have the love. We believe in our people and in our country. And I just hope that me reading this will prompt people to take action and become actively engaged. We need every voice. Every voice matters. Every heart matters. Our love matters. And frankly, love is all there is. So, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on and please take action. Ciao.